this is showing you an aerial view of where situation two or scenario two had occurred. So this was running at the same time as the other traps. So I was in May, we had a change of season, so there's plenty of feed around. Um, this is at the back of a property tucked away in the hills. So they have had pigs here before as it is a key watering point in that area. And we're lucky enough in this situation to get 100% control of the individual population purely through trapping. So we'll show you how we got it. So our current situation is the farmer's gone out and he's chucked good quality grain. Now he's actually fermented this stuff and soaked it and it actually gives it a real sweet smell and it's very attractive for the pigs. So he's used this and it's actually worked. As you can see there, there's been pigs come in and clean up. So that's the first part of the situation now. You can see there's an enormous amount of feed around. So having that good quality grain does make the difference. So the land holder has been free feed now for four nights and we've finally set a trap up close to where they were free feeding before. We're still gonna keep putting the grain in this area where they were free happily feeding before and slowly get them used to the trap. Now we've set a camera up in front of the grain just to see how many pigs are coming in and try and get a good idea of how many numbers we're dealing with. So to give you a bit of a time frame, if you look down the bottom right hand corner, it'll show you a date. 22nd of the 4th was when we first had pigs come. We had four half grain pigs, only ate that, that first bait pile. And it wasn't until the 25th that we had a good show up. So we had five half grain pigs, we had one black sow and one black boar show up. So on the 26th we had one black sow turned up, 27th we had nothing, 28th we had the black sow and black boar show up. Now these pigs were very inconsistent with coming to this trapping site throughout the whole process and our senior bio uh, suggested that maybe these pigs have been chased by dogs quite a bit or been shot at quite a bit and we actually found towards the end of the process we had one of the uh, half grown pigs go missing and we found that one of the boars inside the trap actually had its ears ripped so this sort of confirmed why these pigs were so inconsistent with coming to the trap and actually made it quite difficult to manage and it made it so we had to extend the baiting period and then try and trap again however we did get the result we were looking for so as i said these pigs are very inconsistent with coming to this trap and it wasn't until day 15 the 7th of the 5th that we started seeing all these pigs comfortably feed inside the trap so we haven't had any new pig show up we've just got the five half grown pigs the black sow and the black boar and we've now lowered the gate to start and get them used to pushing their way in so after having this good show up on the 9th, uh, went quiet for a few nights. The black boar came back again the next night. On the 11th, we had nothing. On the 12th, a little wallaby came in, but also did the boar. The boar's been pretty consistent with coming to the trap. Um, he's comfortably feeding inside the trap, so I've got no worries about him. But it wasn't until the 13th, which was four nights later, that the sour and the suckers had came back and they were very sensitive about being around the trap, so something may have happened to them but they've also brought in two new boars. So maybe one of the sows is on heat or the younger ones may be on heat. So this has drawn the two boars in. However, they did not walk inside the trap. As you can see there, the second boar, which is a spotted fella, he spent like four hours nearly in that same spot wanting to go in to get a feed, but knew he wasn't right. So the chances of these walking inside the trap when we do set, it's gonna be very minimal. However, it does happen. So we fed for another seven days after we seen these larger boars come into the trap. Now when we did finally set it, we set the height of the trap to an appropriate height. So we didn't want the smaller pigs to set it off, we wanted one of the larger pigs to set it off because we were hoping that both those larger pigs would be in the trap when it set off because they would be the ones that definitely would not push their way in after. So when we finally did set it, the small boar came in and left and then short minutes after the black sow came in, following her was the second bigger boar. Um, he sort of just ducked his way under the gate. He was set to a height that he could have triggered off, and he nearly did, but he just ducked his way under. And it was the bigger boar that did finally set it off. Now, if you refer to the video one that we did, we showed you some hints and tips and tricks on you know setting up your traps and making them appropriate to your pigs. And having cameras on your traps will help you be able to get the better result. Um, some can say that, you know, maybe this sow was on heat, hence why these boars sort of came out of nowhere and end up walking inside the trap following the sow. You know, I could agree that that could be the case as well. Um, but we got a good result. We got two bigger boars in first. 
And as you can see in the background there, we just missed the other black ball. However, he does come back shortly after. We also had four of the half-grown pigs come back. Now, we were lucky enough to get three of them to push their way in. There was a fifth pig, um, half-grown pig, however, he went missing about a week ago. Now, one of them didn't walk in, and it was the same coloured pig that at the start wouldn't walk in the trap when others would, so he had a bit of natural awareness. So what we're left with, we're left with the one of the half-grown pigs and also the black boar. Now, the farmer kept the trap open, kept free feeding, had nothing for about a month, and then we had a, he had a rain event, and these pigs just bottled straight inside the trap, set it off, and we got 100% control of that individual population. Now, it did take two months, and there was a bit of doubt there towards the end whether these other two will come back, but generally pigs, if they're in the area, they're gonna keep coming back. So it's important to know what pigs you got and trying to manage the 100% control of the population. Um, again, these are a couple of great resources. Uh, there's the Pest Smart booklet, the glove box to managing feral pigs. Um, there's lots of hints and tips in here to help you get a real good control on your pigs. Also, there's another handbook, Meeting Your Biosecurity Duty. So this shows you what it takes to meet your biosecurity duty.